Yer, this is Perp, back with another video, and I just got done watching this brand new Netflix limited series called The Perfect Couple. This is starring Nicole Kidman, Dakota Fanning, um, you have uh, Liva, Leave, Leave Schreiber, I think that's how you pronounce the name. I'm probably butchering his first name, but he's in there. And we have our main lead actress, Eve um Houston I think that's how you pronounce the last name Houston anyways yes she plays Amelia so essentially there's a wedding with Amelia's character and Benji Benji is Nicole Kidman's character uh Greer's um son and she has three sons she has Benji He's like the redheaded one or blonde hair. I don't know what the fuck. Will's the youngest. And then Thomas, he's the oldest out of the three um, sons. And it's pretty much a whodunit because there's this whole big gathering. Obviously, it's a wedding. All the friends and families are there. But then there's something tragic that happens to Amelia's friend, um, Merritt. She ends up being found dead, and then this whole show turns into a whodunit. Now, if you have not caught up or watched this entire series, click away now because I definitely am going to spoil some of the major points about this show. So, you've been warned. Okay, so I like how this kicks off, right? We're at the wedding, and I'm already trying to pick out who could be the suspect. My suspect list was like Thomas, Abby, Abby being uh, Thomas's wife that's also pregnant. Uh, that's a big thing, just to keep that in mind. Uh, we have um, Tag, which that's uh, Lee Schreiber's character. You know what I'm saying? He's the father. And Greer was like the last one on my, my suspect list after watching like the first episode. What I found interesting though, is how they set up certain characters to make you think, oh, they might have something to do with it. Whether it be um, Dan's character that was played by Michael Beach. Uh, he's like the chief of police there. Uh, his daughter has this shirt that has blood on it. So it's just like, oh, does she have something to do with this? She has connections with Will. Will really likes, well, at first, you know, she actually likes him a little bit more. But like I said, it's a little story that kind of co comes and goes and whatnot. Then, you know, you have this new detective that comes into the scene, Detective Henry, that kind of works alongside Chief Dan, you know, and they they have some of the best scenes in this entire series when they get around to doing the interrogation scenes especially in episode six it's some of the best stuff on the series by far so news hasn't really broke out that there was a death that happened at this wedding so they have to kind of delay things and kind of keep people in the shadows so what ends up happening is benji goes to amelia says hey i need you to sign this nda Right there, I would have just been like, that's a red flag. Why am I signing this NDA? And his whole ex explanation is like, everybody has to kind of do this. She's been burned before. And this is where I liked Amelia's character in this first half of the series, where she actually cared about figuring out what happened to her friend. And then somewhere down the line, later on in the series... It just kind of diverts because there's this another character that goes by the name of Shooter. It's pretty much Benji's like best friend. They have this like weird little love triangle story that they just kind of shoehorn in here. And then Amelia's character just becomes absolutely fucking useless. And just I feel like they completely forgot that, you know, she was grieving over her. Her dead friend. 
and I wish they would have done more with her character, but that's all I'll really say about Amelia's character, even though she was supposed to be the lead, she did not really feel like that, but as the series progresses, you start to see more and more clues, and it starts to kind of narrow down the suspects, we get to like, um, Shooter's character, because he tries to do the dash early, and they don't know why he's running it just gets kind of crazy for his character um then we go to tag he's like the next person on the suspect list and what ends up being revealed about him is he actually was messing around with Merritt, got her pregnant and then it's made to look like he was the one that kind of did the murder but then Thank God he had the smartwatch because the smartwatch kind of saved his ass as far as, you know, being his alibi at specific times. Because if he didn't have that smartwatch, he would have been probably pinned with this murder. So he's off the list. Shooter's pretty much off the list. Not completely, but he's kind of off the list. Then they go to Greer. Now, Greer has an interesting lifestyle. She is all about just kind of covering things up. She has this image that she wants to uphold as a, a very world famous like author making all these all these millions of dollars and whatnot. Has this whole PR team by her at standby in case shit goes left. And it was at this point where it's like, damn, it might actually be Greer. You know what I'm saying? But then once they put two or two together, they realize, oh shit, Maybe she's not the one that's involved because I really like this part where there's this guy, you know, I just know the actor uh, from Sons. He pops back up into her life and they want to bring him in for questioning because they see that there is a wire transfer from, you know, Shooter's account to this guy named um, Broderick Graham. And this is where things get really crazy as it gets revealed that it's actually this Broward character is actually her brother. I lied to you now. I was like, no fucking way. And this is where Greer starts to kind of just spill all the tea. I think this is like episode five towards the end of five or going in or somewhere around there. It's in those last two episodes where she pretty much lets it known like, yo, I used to be an escort. This is how I met your father. And she, she's just completely sick of the lies and sick of everything that's going on. Because everybody in this family is just very privileged and just completely annoying and filled with just secrets and cover-ups and stuff like that. You got Thomas trying to bang um, the family mistress, uh, Isabel. <laughs> I really don't know what Isabella does. But, and then you got Will, the youngest, that just acts like a spoiled little brat, bro. He's just so annoying. I'm so glad they kept his whole storyline very short and sweet. But yeah, going back to Greer, when we get that whole bombshell and stuff, it's just like, damn, then who le who's left on the table? It's got to be Abby. That's played by uh, Dakota Fanning's character. And when Thomas kind of breaks this whole thing down, when he gets interrogated, pretty much breaks it down that like you know the whole will and why Merritt might have wanted uh somebody would have wanted to kill Merritt is because of the money because if there's a new baby on the way that kind of resets the whole will thing so it was kind of like an ingenious idea but Abby got way too messy and Detective Henry is a really good cop in this and she just noticed that there's something was off about her and i also like how they show all these different perspectives on who were who was where at what time who interacted with merit overall this was a very entertaining series i just don't like what they did with amelia's character it's just that was the most frustrating storyline out of all of this but man nicole kimman killed it in this she by by far had the best performance in this um everybody else did a good job i like the way this was shot it's very clean 
I want to know your thoughts if you get around to checking out The Perfect Couple. What did you think about it? Did you already have it kind of figured out from the beginning? Let me know your thoughts. Till next time, I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.